you know, every year we all sit down and mindlessly write goals for the new year and then it just starts to hit you you know every day you're constantly being reminded that you'll not be young again and the more I kept thinking about time the more I felt rushed to experience everything but when you start to add just so much reason and questions and whys to every action of your life it doesn't feel like you're living anymore but for me I didn't care I honestly like to question everything is it healthy probably not I probably shouldn't look into every detail but it's who I am this is how I created this is how I somehow just came up with ideas for myself and with this movie it felt like a reset for me it felt like this was my time to just say yes to all the thoughts in the back of my head I kept denying and of course it took some time it was to just truly be myself and trust that maybe I am creative in my own way and you know for the first time I wasn't thinking about any outcome I was just thinking about right now This is the thing about creating videos, or if you're into film, and you're always going to be stuck in your head in a way. And it's messy. It's really messy. In this creative process, it's messy to the point where it's hard to really organize your thoughts, and maybe you forget an idea because you're taking too long to really act on it. And that's what usually happens as a creator or anybody that's just loves to film things in general. But you know, one of the things that I really learned was to just create with intention, but not expectation. And it's, it's such an important thing to me because before I would always play things out, right? I, I've said this multiple times. Every time I have a video idea, I try to plan it out, but then I start to see like the negative side of it. Like, oh, this is not gonna work. People aren't gonna really connect to it. There's no point. And then you just like cancel out that whole plan that you had in your head. And it's like, once that idea comes, it, you have to sort of act on it right there and not necessarily act on it to the point where you need to post it because sometimes an idea is just there for you to get different inspiration. Maybe find something else that you're really interested in. You don't always have to act on everything. You know, I always think about that day though, like I woke up really early and I was like, I'm just gonna create everything that I wanna create and I'm tired of holding back on everything that I would just, you know, leave in a closed book and I wouldn't really want to further it and I didn't think about anything. I wasn't thinking about planning. I was just there. And I went to the donut shop. I just got a bagel. And I just recorded, you know, my typical life. And I didn't want to lie about everything that's going on in my life. I was like, this is what I do in the morning. This is how peaceful. And maybe it's boring to people, but that's just what it is, you know. And obviously, living in this small city, it was definitely unmotivating. It made you feel like you didn't have a lot of options to do much. And you feel more obligated to stay in your house and not really get things done. And I just used it to my advantage now. And I used to see the small city as like an annoyance, but now I see it as very peaceful. I don't know where I'm going to live one day, and I hope that I continue to do this, of course, too, wherever I go. And I feel like this year for me is just all about traveling and working with what I have and stop trying to want more and just do more you know what i mean like that's it my voice is a little messed up so we're done here yeah i got a little haircut you want to see it it doesn't look that good with the uh, without the beanie never mind
2019, it was like sort of the end of the year, I started getting back into music and I remember I was writing so many songs and I was trying to think of an album title and I said something like, welcome to my room. And I was like, maybe that would be a good album title or a podcast title. I don't know. I was just like brainstorming. I don't know if people do that. Do you ever just brainstorm ideas of things that you don't even see yourself doing? You just want to write it down. And that was kind of like the first time I started writing so much. And, you know, I have so many ideas for an album and for all these things. And I never acted on it. And in that sort of moment, I went into my room and I looked around. And I was like, man, I, I just don't like how this room looks. So me making music, me thinking of an album title, me walking into my room and then looking at it, I was like, I don't like anything in here. It it just kind of hit me. I was like, I want to change everything. I'm tired of this. I want to paint the walls. I want to put more frames. I want to do this over here. I've been wanting to change my old chair for the longest now because it's really not that comfortable. And and after like 20 minutes, I just end up jumping on my bed right away. And it just messes up my entire editing schedule because... You get really lazy when you're on your bed and you don't really want to continue things. And yeah, I just want to thank FlexiSpot for even sending me the C7 ergonomic chair. And I was just worried if it was going to be comfortable or not, but they do offer a lot of features, including the lumbar support cushion, which is one of my favorite because it sort of follows you when you lean forward. And it's really easy to stretch too because of the recline option. And you could get the foam cushion instead of the mesh if you want it to be even more comfortable for the seat. But it really does depend on your liking, of course. And this chair is very adjustable, like from the arms and the headrest. And you can even make the seat tilt forward to give your legs a little more room to breathe, I'm assuming. But I don't really use it too much. I think it's really cool, though, that they have so many options for people to really just mess around with it. And one of the features that I don't like is the headrest does move around a little too much for me. I wish it was a lot more firm and just still. But other than that, you know, This is good to keep your posture very steady and if you think this isn't for you there is a 30-day return for the chair so you have plenty of time to just look at different options and if you want something a little more affordable i would recommend the c5 and the c3 office chair sorry my voice is like disappearing because i strained it the other day but if you do want the c7 there is a new year's day sale and if you just go on flexispot.com you can use my exclusive code johnnylo10 and it will be in the description and you can also get 30 dollars off your purchase But yeah, I just really want to thank you guys so much for even just giving me this opportunity to be here and and create these videos that I never thought I would put online, you know, and it's going to be a long year of creating and I don't know what to expect and I'm really just in the moment right now and just really experimenting with my options and seeing where I want to take this and, you know, we'll see, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. As children, we always talked about like using YouTube as like an avenue yeah. um, when we got older and uh, we, we made it happen in our own ways, which is pretty cool. So when it came to you, like when do you think like the first time you created videos that you were going to continue to do this? Like what made you want to continue to do this? I think um, very early on, I was never like a very creative person. And once I kind of discovered this way of um, self-expression like it kind of I I fell in love with it so even before I started making content um, on YouTube or for YouTube I was just um, for myself just creating a bunch of small little um, videos and and photos and I really wasn't sharing anything Um, so in that process I was just learning and experimenting and then once um, I started uploading on YouTube it was never really like I was expecting anything I I was just kind of putting my work out there Um, and then I think the part that kept me pursuing my content creation is is just the gratification that you get from finishing a project and like creating it start to finish on your own I wasn't really trying to grow or like thinking about audience it was it was just like personal and I think that's the thing about content creating. For some people, it could be personal. For some people, it could be like it's something bigger than them. They want to create a video that's going to be for an audience and yeah. to please other people. And when you make it your job, you, that comes around, you know, it becomes your thoughts and you start to think about an audience. But, you know, I, over time, you know, when I started posting on TikTok and I started just sharing my journals and just sharing all these entries I had, 
this is when I started to get into film and yeah. that's when I was starting to realize like damn I'm really into directing or just creating videos for myself and acting and I was like I don't know why this happened to me but I feel like everyone especially during you know COVID and the yeah. whole like pandemic people were kind of going through this whole like self-discovery mm -hmm. and trying to figure out what exactly is for them and what they should yeah. be doing and but that's the thing like you know there's there's never really a right answer especially in your 20s you're still like discovering what exactly you want to keep doing or what do you want to include in your life so I am curious about like your whole like thought process when it comes to creating videos. Mm -hmm. So do you feel that like all your ideas are planned all the time or is it more spontaneous in a way? Do you think like it just comes to you? Yeah, I think initially it is, it has to be for me somewhat planned yeah. in terms of um, location, what exactly I'm gonna do. But then once um, I'm actually there, you know, filming or whatever, um, I always tell myself like just just get something mm -hmm. um, I think the video or the film really comes out in the edit like the edit is where everything kind of starts um, making sense because when I'm recording a lot of times especially early on I was just filming like random stuff and then in the edit I kind of just figure out what story to tell through that yeah um, but I think now as I'm progressing more into I guess actual like filmmaking and cinematography, I now try and plan as much as I can. Um, because especially when you're on like film sets, there's, your, your enemy is always time. Whereas with YouTube videos, you have like pretty much all the time in the world. Exactly. Like yeah. before, um, if I wasn't happy with a video, I'd scrap it and just re-record it. Um, so yeah, I think um, planning is always part of the process though. And after that, you have freedom to to just do whatever you want to do. Do you ever feel like you've overplanned to the point where like you just don't even want to make the video anymore? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, what do you do in those situations? Like, if you're overplanning or you feel like you're just overthinking a specific project or video you're doing, do you just kind of keep sticking with it, or do you like tell yourself, you know what, I'm just gonna restart this and start over? Yeah, I think. Um, that's actually something I'm struggling with right now. It's just like, I, whenever I have an idea, I just keep up expanding upon it. And sometimes it's just so out of reach and so unrealistic sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have to kind of like pull back on certain ideas or just kind of um, replace them with something that is more feasible. Um, but something I, I want to do next year is just really all those ideas that seem out of reach, I want to attack them like head on and see um, how far I can take them. The boundaries are just being pushed so far now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at content a couple years ago, it, it's, it, it wasn't anything like what we are seeing now. Okay, so this is the first camera that I used for YouTube. The first time I tried it, I remember just using this one. And it's really good, not gonna lie. It is a very small lens, and it's very light too, which I really like. The only thing I don't like is that this little thing here. I think most Sony cameras have that. It's like a little rod for your strap or something. It just makes so much noise, but... You know, I'm so grateful that I had a camera to start off with, but... To be honest, I would even use my phone too because I have an iPhone 11 and shoots like 4K and it's really not that bad. And Yeah, I tried my best to just work with what I have. And even though back then my mindset was to always figure out what right gear to use, right? I would always search up videos and just figure out like, how am I going to film this? How am I going to do that? And the more you try to figure out the hows and what you should be doing versus what you can do, you kind of just overwhelm yourself. and. You feel like you're behind in a way and you put yourself behind because you see so many people spending so much money and so much things on equipment when you don't really need to and i feel like you know with creativity and just 
you know, self-expression. You don't need all this expensive stuff. You just need your voice and just share your thoughts. And you can do it your own way. You don't have to do it the way I do it. And, you know, if you pop up in my feed one day, I probably will get inspiration from you. And, you know, that's just how it is when people get influenced in a really nice way. And, you know, when I get an idea and if I have this, like, negative or positive feeling towards it, I sort of make an idea on that feeling, if that makes any sense. And it, it's kind of like if, you know, every day feels boring to me. I made a video on that feeling because I was constantly telling myself, I don't know what to create. You know, I'm just bored with everything that I'm doing. And I was like, why don't I make a video on that? And I think that's how my whole process is. It's just constant going back and forth and an idea from an idea. And it's just like this domino effect. But, you know, it works out. It works out in my favor. And you know, I feel like a lot of us have these really crazy dreams and it's very typical, especially in this day and age where people will say they want to be a director, they want to be an actor, they want to be on set, they want to make movies and stuff. And it's hard to sort of take action on it because maybe we feel we need to know more before we can actually get things done, right? And you're just constantly beating yourself up and slowing your process down. <laughs> You know, I'm not going to lie, maybe I was wrong the whole time. It's probably not a bad thing that you question everything. I think you're always going to question things, and you're going to constantly cross things out, forget about it for months and weeks, and then out of nowhere, that's where the passion reignites. And This time, you feel that things will be different. And the more I allowed myself to just wander in my thoughts, and the more chances I get to remember, to create, and to just bring my vision back to life, and just do something about it.